What up, Fight World? It's your boy Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. Today is Monday, which means Monday Mail Day. Now, I try to answer a lot of questions. Uh, it's Fight Week, Cotto Canelo. Great fight, HBO pay per view. Looking forward to it. Let's get right into it. I try to pick a bunch of different questions, and let me jam through them. First question is from Raynell Camilio. In your opinion, what would it take for Canelo to become the pound for pound king? Because I think he is already the pound for pound king. Thanks, Ego. Next question is from Brian Olia. Is Canelo considered an elite if he beats Cotto via KO? If so, what's his best next move? And last Canelo question. What's next for Canelo? He comes out the victor. Is it Bradley or Golovkin? What fight draws more money? Now, in my opinion, that's easy. I think Triple G versus Canelo just all the way around makes more sense, especially if he is victorious against Cotto, especially since Cotto has the lineal middleweight titles that I believe they're fighting for, and Triple G is a respected middleweight champion and considered the best middleweight. Bradley just, I've already talked about this in the past, doesn't make sense to me. Bradley doesn't really have much power. He's a great fighter, exceptional fighter, but he's been hurt by guys in the 140-147 division, so... I mean, I really don't want to see him move up to fight Canelo. What's the basis? Like I said before, if Bradley, what's the point of a fighter moving up if you know that they're really not going to even attempt to stay up there? Like, you know what I mean? And not even that they're not going to, that they wouldn't be capable of beating anybody up there. Like, you know what I'm saying? And I like, I just think it, it's just so much of a, like Bradley, can you picture Bradley versus a six foot, six foot one Demetrius Andrade? Probably not. You know what I'm saying? So what's the point? Let Bradley do numbers, fight guys like Kel Brook, Cons, Keith Thurman's at 147. Um, so what's next for Canelo? Two people asked me that. I think he should just uh, try to take a title defense. Now, he, if he fights Cotto, his next fight doesn't have to be the cream of the crop. He could fight, you know what I mean, a middle of the road guy. Or he can go after somebody like a Laura rematch, a Charlo if he wants to go big, Demetrius Andrade. Anybody like that would be great, you know what I'm saying? But after fighting a legend like Cotto, I'm not expecting him to necessarily fight the next top division, the next top um, number one guy in the division or anything based on it's his first title defense. Like, I give every fighter the same passes. Like, Deontay Wilder, he beat Bermain Stavern. That was a tall order. That was his challenge. He did it. And he had, like, two confidence builders as champion fights. So I'm okay with that. But, I mean, ideally, from being a, a greedy boxing fan, a Triple G fight would be... I would love Canelo versus Triple G if he beats Cotto. And then the uh, other question is, Canelo elite if he beats Cotto via KO? Yeah, I mean, that's he's on the road to it. You know what I'm saying? I can't say... I'd have to see how the fight played out, but he's definitely a force to be reckoned with if he were to stop Cotto. Because Cotto, he's been stopped before but arguably one of the guys that stopped him was cheating and the other guy being Pacquiao and Pacquiao was mowing everybody down so I mean Canelo definitely does a lot for his stock if he was to knock out Cotto especially if he were to do it non-TKO if he just KO'd him that would be huge for the country of Mexico and also for Canelo and his his fan base and also for his resume and Raynell's question was what would it take for Canelo? Again, it, it's kind of the same. Canelo, he's on the road to success if he beats Cotto convincingly, period. It, if it, it doesn't have to even be a knockout. I mean, obviously, that would be icing on the cake. But if he beats Cotto and it's not like disputed like the Laura fight, it's not like one-sided where he's on the losing end like the Mayweather fight or a controversial, semi-controversial fight like his fight with Trout, if he just clearly, concisely beats him like he beat Shane Mosley or something like that, and there's no disputing it, like he wins knockout or he just wins enough rounds convincingly, then he's on the road to becoming the pound-for-pound -pound king. One guy retired, Mayweather, and then the other guy is probably one fight away from retiring, which is Pacquiao. So the only remaining out of the old school is Cotto. So if he defeats Cotto, he kind of, it's like Highlander, he, he defeats him and kind of inherits his, his strength. And again, the other two people who have pound-for-pound -pound king titles are Mayweather, who says he's retired, and then, like I said, Pacquiao, who's nearing retirement. So that would be a good start for the young fighter. Next question comes from Moonstruck. Who would you like to move up in weight? Canelo, Triple G, or Andre Ward? Well, I mean, 
the Andre Ward, that one's kind of unnecessary because he did move up from super middleweight. And he actually had a few options, like Badu Jack, he could have did a unification, fought a Darrell brother or James DeGale. But he moved up to light heavyweight, so I kind of have to cross him off your list because he actually did move up. So regardless of if I wanted him to move up or if I didn't, um, it doesn't really make sense in reference to your question because he's already moved up. That's already a, a, a fact. Um, so between Canelo and Triple G, Triple G. And the simple reason is because... Canelo, there's still, 154, in my opinion, there's still a lot of fights that, to me, can prove a lot for Canelo. That he's had trouble, like a lower rematch at 54. Demetrius Andrade, an undefeated guy who's six foot tall, a good boxer, a southpaw. You got the the Charlo brother, the one that's, that's a champion now that beat K-9 Bundridge impressively and stopped him. You know what I mean? You got some guys like that, Julian Williams. You got you got some talent, like some real serious talent at 54, in my opinion. Versus when I think of middleweight, I already consider Triple G to be the best middleweight there. So like him fighting Andy Lee Saunders winner, like I would pick Triple G easily to beat them. So I don't really think that is much of a challenge. I would pick him to beat Quillen Jacobs winner. So Toriano Johnson, I would pick him to beat really all the guys at middleweight. And I don't think... Um, I think those guys, if they, they were to, this, this is going to sound, this is a, a credit to Triple G. I think he's, his skill level and experience would put him past everybody at middleweight. So to really see his skills tested, I think 168 would be the ticket because I don't think there's some good fighters or there's guys at middleweight right now that have certain traits like power, but then they don't have technique or they don't have experience. Example, Peter Quillen. He can crack. He has power, but he had less than 20 amateur fights, so he doesn't have any amateur background. So, I mean, when I'm talking about a guy with 350 amateur fights in Golovkin and who's undefeated, then I would, of course, have to favor the guy with power also, but good technique and uh, more amateur experience, more experience in in general. Same thing with Andy Lee. Andy Lee, a lot of the fights he's losing, he do, he like comes from behind so he's been stopped before he has power but he doesn't necessarily always have the best technique or best defense you know what i'm saying so really all the guys at middleweight they're at a certain level you know what i mean they might bring a few things to the table that maybe on any given day they could pull the upset over triple g but i really wouldn't favor them i don't think they would be the the las vegas odds favorite to beat triple g any of them versus if he goes to 168 there are some people there that would the odds would at least be closer so that's just my opinion i'd like to see him move up and out of that whole bunch next question is from bayron 13 what do you think about the way miguel cotto is being portrayed by fighters and trainers as old and having nothing to bring to the canelo fight has he not done enough already have these people not been watching thank you for your excellent work ego now I'm going to say it like this. I picked Canelo to beat Cotto. Check out my video, Seven Reasons. I detail why I feel that. However, I'm a realistic boxing fan. It's not to shit on Cotto because Cotto has a chance. This is the type of fight to me where I don't care who you're picking. If you make a solid argument and you can argue why, I can see different sides. So I can see why people are picking Cotto to beat Canelo. I can see why people are picking Canelo. It's that type of fight. It's a pick em fight. So anything less than respect for Miguel Cotto for what he's done is just probably race related. You know what I'm saying? Like Mexico versus Puerto Rico rivalries or whatever. People have their own like bias and stereotypes or, or, or something stupid. But I mean, there's no reason to discredit. Even if you pick Canelo to win, there's no reason to discredit a guy like Cotto. Cotto won his last three fights, I think, all by stoppage, despite the opponents or anything else. So you got to give him respect. He also has one of the deepest resumes in active boxing currently. So you got to give Cotto his respect, whether you're picking Canelo or Cotto. And even Canelo in the HBO face-off, he respected Cotto. He said that, you know what I'm saying? So the fans that do all that radical, Cotto's a bitch, and you know what I'm saying? All that extra stuff then, you know what I'm saying, I don't really take it serious because I don't know who you're talking about. You said fighters and trainers saying he's old. and I don't know what interviews you're referring to particularly, but I've seen comments like that where people are just super disrespectful to Kodo. It's not even about disrespect. You can you can 
intelligently explain who you want to win or why you think a person will win without trying to discredit. Because if, if Koto's so old and weak and, and feeble or whatever, that's what I never understood. If he's so if he's all these things, then why do you even want to see the fight? Why do you want to see Canelo fight somebody who's old? You know what I'm saying? So a lot of times people, Freddie Roach does this often, where he'll say something like, Manny Pacquiao's sparring partners are way better than Chris Algieri. He sucks. Like, why the fuck are you, why is Pacquiao fighting him then? You know what I'm saying? So a lot of times people talk themselves into a corner. Cotto is a champion. He's the lineal champion. Respect him as that. He has a deep resume. He's been in there with Pacquiao's, Mayweather's, Margarito's, Mosley's, Claudie's. Zab Judah, he's been in there with everybody, so just leave it at that, whether you're picking Canelo or Cotto, respect both fighters for lacing them up, which is something that half of the people leaving the comments have never done, so it is what it is, Cotto's a champ, um, so, and you also take away from the win, if you are a diehard Canelo fan, and you're belittling Cotto, then you're also belittling his win if he were to beat Cotto, so again, boxing fans, a lot of times just emotional, sometimes races involved, things like that, so I, I wouldn't pay much attention to it. Next question is from Jack C. 3D. Do you think Rigandau would have been better off signing with Al Heyman instead of Rock Nation? I feel like Rigandau would have had more exposure had he signed with Heyman. Please give your thoughts. Thanks. I do. I think Al Heyman, just because of the frequency of which Al Heyman fighters have been fighting. I mean, Broner fought against John Molina. He fought Sean Porter and Khabib Alakverdiev all this year. Keith Thurman fought against Robert Guerrero. And then he fought against Luis Colazzo. And they were trying to push the Sean Porter fight. So that would have been three fights for him. Robert Guerrero fought Thurman. Robert Guerrero fought Aaron Martinez. Danny Garcia fought Lamont Peterson. And then he also fought um, Pauli Malignaggi. So realistically, Heyman, with the PBC structure, he's been keeping his fighters pretty busy. And that's exactly what a guy like Rigandau needs. You know what I mean? Just to keep fighting. So it probably would have been better. But this is the thing. It's like if you're homeless... And somebody and you're starving and somebody gives you a sandwich, maybe it's not your maybe it's bologna and you don't really like bologna, but beggars can't be choosers. Like if you're really starving and bologna's not your preferred deli meat, then it is what it is. The reason I'm saying that is because Rigandau, his career has been stagnant. He hasn't fought in a while since then Magasa. He's having a hard time getting fights. Caribe promotions wasn't able to put him on that type of mainstream platform. Top rank wasn't promoting him in the right way things like that so even though i think pbc would have been better anything is better than inactivity so even though pbc and al Heyman probably would have been a better fit rock nation let's see what they can do because it's still better than him not getting any fights and him being inactive at least he's fighting on the Cotto canelo undercard which is more than what has been happening in the last few months so you know what i mean beggars can't be choosers so i'll rock with the the rock nation deal as long as he he gets some fights, you know what I'm saying? And hopefully they can unify and, and make the fights that he needs. You know what I mean? The the Framptons, the Quig winner, things like that. Next question is from Emmanuel Arias. Ego, do you think Manny's next fight should be pay-per-view? Manny hasn't looked impressive to me in his last four fights. And his fan base were mostly like bandwagons that are now fans of Triple G. And who would you like to see him face next? Um... Yeah, I mean, I would put it on pay-per-view. Just, I mean, if Chris Algieri Pacquiao was on pay-per-view, why not? And this is supposedly his, his last fight. So, yeah, just keep it pay-per-view. That's what he's been fighting on. I mean, I think he has enough fans to where, where it'll pay for it, especially depending on who he fights, uh, who I want to see him fight. I really want to see him fight Maidana, which is actually a question on here, and I'll, I'll talk about that a little bit more. Maidana would be a great fight if Maidana came back correct and is still hungry. Terrence Crawford... Uh, fight with Amir Khan. Any of the, those guys, to me, are are probably the best picks of who I personally want to see Pacquiao face next. I would even like to see Canelo, just to see if there's any way he can handle, like even a Canelo at a catch weight, but that's not really realistic because a Canelo's been fighting at Canelo weight, and most people are going to argue that Canelo's too big, so I'll just leave it at that. So the other people I said were cool. Terrence Crawford, Amir Khan. Um, I mean, Kell Brook. Keith Thurman, any of those guys like that, any top guy like that, I would like to see Terrence Crawford, any any top guy like that, Maidana. Next question is from Omar Benitez. Do you see the Cold War in boxing eventually ending and Al Heyman and Bob Aaron finally working together to give the fights we want to see? The short answer, no. Not anytime soon, at least. They're suing each other. Well, not suing each other, but top rank is suing him. 
And if you know anything about the court system, legal battles tend to take a while. So that's going to take a long time to, to hash out in the courtroom, especially if there's objections and things are overruled and you have to evidence gets thrown out. You know what I mean? There's all types of legal mumbo jumbo that goes on. So just the legal process alone makes me feel like the Cold War is not over anytime soon in as re, in regards to Al Hammond and Bob Arum. Dante's Boxing Nation also did an interview with Bob Arum and he says, do you think it's possible you could, he, he was cool, he was cordial. He said, is it possible you could work with Al Hammond since he's doing the PBC? Bob Arum said, nope, and walked away. So, I mean, obviously if that's his mindset now, and he's the, the founder and CEO of Top Rank, then it's really not going to happen. I don't know Al Heyman because he doesn't do interviews, so I don't know what his standpoint is. But, I mean, you're hearing the other side, and they're clearly saying that, no, it's not a possibility. So he's in his feelings or whatever. It's, it's not going to happen. Next question is from Frederick Cotton. You got more Troy King interviews on the way? He speak the truth. Yes, me and Troy, um, I believe we're going to try to do this turkey drive out here in Oakland. So I'll probably be working with him that day and just like donate, like giving, donating our time and, and giving out turkeys to the less fortunate and homeless people in the area. You know what I mean? Oakland's rough. It's rough out in, in the Bay. That's one of the sections. So we're going to try to play our part and help out for this Thanksgiving. But aside from that, I'll be in the gym, Oakland gym, just, just going out there, getting some stuff. You guys have questions for him, just drop it on his videos or whatever He's on Twitter. He's on social media. So, yeah, we'll definitely be working together. Next question is from Roberto Flores. How do you feel about a fight between Tim Bradley and Khan? Love it. Great fight. It was a fight that was supposed to be happening years ago. Khan called out Bradley, but Bradley was concerned with getting in the Pacquiao sweepstakes. It never materialized. Now, it still makes sense. Bradley looks good with Teddy Atlas. Stop Brandon Rios, first person to do that. Amir Khan has a new trainer since back in the day. He's no longer with Freddie Roach. He's with Virgil Hunter. Make it happen. They're both in the same division again. Um, they moved up from 140. They're both at welterweight. Make it happen. Next question is from Pedro Simon. Do you think Maidana will be back? And how do you feel about him versus Pacquiao? Now, I was saying this earlier. I've always wanted to see Pacquiao versus Maidana, especially since Maidana fought Floyd twice. That's a great barometer. And some people sleep on it like, oh, Pacquiao will beat him easy. Maidana's too slow. Maidana is, to me, an improved pressure fighter. He improved his style with Roberto Garcia. His jab got better. He was already tough as fuck. And he hits hard. And he's unorthodox. So, Having seen him fight Broners and uh, Mayweather twice and stuff like that, I would love to see how Pacquiao would deal with him at 147. Great fight. The only stipulation is that it's the same Maidana we've always seen. He he, he looked like he kind of lost his hunger to compete and was glad to be away from boxing after the Mayweather paydays, living in Argentina, gaining weight and stuff. So if it's not the Maidana that fought Khan and Broner and, and Mayweather and stuff, then I'll pass. But other than that, if, it's, if he comes back focused and disciplined and stuff and can make weight comfortably, he has enough time and stuff, I would love to see that. Just to see, it's a good barometer to see how Pacquiao would do. Because it's really been a while since Pacquiao fought a pressure fighter. Maybe Brandon Rios, but again, like I said, the Brandon Rios fight happened a couple years ago. And Brandon Rios, was that was his first fight at welterweight. And he was coming off of a loss, right? Maidana's also coming off a loss. His last fight was Mayweather. But... He has more, um, he's been acclimated, he's been fighting at welterweight since Devin Alexander, which was a few fights ago. He had four wins in a row at the time he fought Broner, and he stopped three of them. Josito Lopez, he fought a, a homecoming fight, and then he fought Jesus Carras, and yeah, and then Broner, and he almost stopped Broner, then he fought Mayweather twice. So way more acclimation to the division, and that's a good fight. Pacquiao seems to be kind of slowing down I, I don't after the Mayweather loss after five years I don't really know where Pacquiao's mentality is either both of them their last fight they lost to Mayweather so hell yeah let's make it let's see what happens let's see who can bounce back from their Mayweather loss better and I mean I hope Maidana comes back he, he's fun he, he has the spirit of a fighter and he's like a I don't give a fuck no nonsense type fighter and we need those in boxing we need all the styles and the last question Aldo Duarte what up, Ego? Do you think that body shot from Colazzo exposed Thurman, or did it show he can handle adversity like a true champ? Yeah, I, I, I think I agree with the latter part of your statement more than um, the initial part of the question. 
I think the word in boxing exposed gets thrown around far too often. There's a couple words, but that's one of them that get thrown around far too often. The reason I say that is it's hard to expose somebody, especially when they get knocked out in the end. Like you can expose flaws, but you can't say they were exposed because Colazzo wasn't all the way able to pull the trigger. He didn't even create a knockdown and then he later got stopped. So it was a good valiant effort, but I wouldn't say Thurman is exposed as a whole because he still lost the fight. And I'm talking about uh, Luis Colazzo by stoppage. You know what I mean? Because if that's the case, then Jesus Soto Carras, even though he got knocked out by Thurman, he exposed Thurman because he clipped him in the first round. Or Diego Chavez, he was banging and he made Keith Thurman make some adjustments. So that's like saying even though he got stopped by a body shot by Keith Thurman, he exposed him. So I don't agree with the whole term exposed in the in the casual sense, the way some of the casual fans say it. You could say he exposed a vulnerability or exposed like a, a hole in his game plan, but he hasn't exposed him as a, a fighter because, again, Thurman's still undefeated. So it did show that he could take adversity because, again, there's other people like Ronda Rousey. She just fought Holly Holm, had trouble, difficulty, and then gets knocked out in two rounds. Thurman, he got hurt, and he was you could everyone could see he started running around, and you know what I'm saying he's he's fleeing. You could tell he's hurt, but he he ate that. You know what I'm saying? So you can't say he's exposed it just showed maybe he doesn't like getting hit to the body so it may be exposed to weakness but you can't say him as a fighter is exposed and that basically wraps it up monday mail day i try to get to a lot of questions let me know what you think make sure you like my video as always hate comment and subscribe till next video is ego signing off